Welcome back to the final installment in this Unreal Engine Artificial Intelligence tutorial series that I've been working on. In the last two videos we set up basic stuff that we needed. We set up some decor a decorator, a task, and a service. We set up our bot, we set up our behavior tree, and we set up our blackboard. And once everything was set up, this is what we had gotten. We can run up to our character, or the bot, he'll chase us, we can run around. Once we line of sight the bot, he will take two seconds and then return to the spot at which he started. Or he can see me again, one or the other. Um, Alright, so we lost him behind the post, and there he goes running back. Alright, but he just sits there. He doesn't do anything. Well, in this video, we're going to make him path around, and we're going to make it to where instead of returning to that point in which he's at right now when he's done chasing us, let's say he's right here on the back side of this and I engage him, and he's chasing us, and he's chasing us. Well, I don't want him to run back over there. I want him to run over here to the back side of this block where I found him. So that's what gonna, we're going to make him do. Okay. This will be a, a little lengthy of a video, but we'll get through it. All right, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is go ahead and open up your blackboard and make sure that this is still what you have because this should be what you got. All right, and we're going to have to make a new task. All right, and I'm going to call this one, well, we're going to start a new one. I'm going to mouse out just so that I can save it real quick. F2, and we're going to call this patrolling because that's what he's going to do. He's going to be walking around, he's going to be wandering, he's going to be patrolling. Okay. And we need to set it up to be an execute because this is a task. So something's going to trigger this to happen. Okay. So with that in mind, we're going to get this all set up here. Now you can do this part one of two ways. Okay. You can either have a delay in there to where when he gets to the point, he waits a few minutes, or, well, a few seconds, makes up his mind whether he wants to go again, or he can just hit the point, turn, and go to a new point. Me, I'm going to put in a time delay because I like to give him a small fraction of time to where he can decide what, what he wants to do. And also, if it's a first-person shooter game you're creating this for, it gives you a chance to shoot him. So to do this, we want to make a random time. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our graph and we're going to choose random float and we want random float in range. Okay. Now the minimum is going to stay zero, but the maximum I'm going to make 1.5. I'm going to slide this up here and I'm going to go ahead and connect that up. Now from here what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to drag off of other actor I'm going to go ahead and create and add a reroute just so that I can make the grid look all nice and neat. And I'm going to drag up here. Now what we have to do is we have to cast to our AI controller. All right. This way we can use it to get other functions and or other features and stuff like that from within the AI bot into this if we need them. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just promote that to a variable. So it's there. Hmm. In fact, actually, you know what? No, I'm not because we don't actually need this variable. So we're going to save on nodes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get controlled pawn. Because what we're going to do is, with this being a pathing thing, we don't want him running all over the place. We want him walking, casually exploring until he sees us. Then we want him to run. So what we have to do is we have to change the run speed. So we need to drag out the get control pawn and then we have to cast to the AI bot. Okay. Because the bot itself is what the pawn is, not the controller. Now off of that we need to drag out get character movement. I would recommend typing that all out unless you want to just type enough and then kind of scroll through the list, but it's normally at the bottom but get character movement is what you want and then I'm going to drag off of that node I'm going to go set max walk speed now you can set all kinds of different things but we're not worried about any of that right now we're just worried about the walking 
if you want to change his gravity while he's walking and then when he sees you he just drops to the ground hard and starts running you could do that through there too I don't know why you would want to but you could All right we're gonna set this to 200 now remember we set the run speed down from 6 to 400 when we were creating the bot. This is going to take that 400 and make it 200 while he's in patrol. Okay. Now with that done we've got to turn, come back here and we have to get the actor location. Now we need the location of the actor in which we're patrolling. So in this case, it's the bot. Okay. We need to find out, or not find out where he's at, but we need to take where he is and move him to a new location. So we're going to do that with a random point. Okay. Now we have two random points here. Okay. We have a get random point and navigatable b radius, and we have a get random reachable point and radius. Now, navigatable point means anything within that nice little green area that the nav mesh left. Get a random reachable point within radius is that if you're going down a long hallway but it's really narrow, you can't reach any point outside of those walls. So what this would do is it would keep them points within the walls for you to get to. So it would save on computing time um, if you have a lot of short and narrow areas and stuff like that. But I'm going to get navigatable radius because my radius is not going to be beyond that of my level. And I'm going to go for a thousand. Okay. Now with that we have to take and drag that up and we have to set blackboard value as a vector okay. because we have a a variable that we can use to control what the radius is where we're going to be running to alright and then off of key we're going to right click and we're going to promote the variable and we're going to call this uh, let's call it destination because that's the destination that's where we're going to be going so we're going to make sure we make it editable so that we can alter it within our blue or within our behavior tree and then and this is one thing i always forget make sure that you finish the execute okay this is going to come into it but it'll never go anywhere else if you do not finish the execute all right so with that made we can go ahead and close that out because we will not need to get back into it all right and now we can come into here and we can set some stuff up okay. now another way you can move around in here is you can double click on things okay. now that's all fine and dandy so if you that's how you want to do it you can or you can see like I've got them all left up here and stuff now another thing you'll notice is my blackboards no longer say blackboards they actually have titles if you select them and you go node name and you can change whatever you want it to be like in this case player found returning to patrol because it's going to be going back to control from that one right there okay. All right. now with that being said there are some things that we need to do within the rapid movement okay so we're going to take this right here we're going to drag this back a little and we're going to drag off of this and we're going to get controlled pawn again okay. we're doing the same thing that we just did in the patrol but we're going to change the run change the speed to more of a run versus a walk so we'll probably put it back to 400 because as the main character yours is already 600 but you don't want the bot to be able to catch you you want him to have to work at it a little bit so you don't want his quite as fast as yours Control that up. 
And like I said, we're going to set this to 400. And then I'm going to hook that up to there. And I'm going to hook the true into that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And that's all we have to do within that one, so we can get out of that now. Okay. So now with that, we have to we have to do some some work on our blackboard here real quick. Okay. We're gonna need two different keys. One's gonna be a boolean, and one is going to be a. Hmm. Actually, you know what? We may not need the second one, so we won't put it in right now. But we will need this one. Okay. It's gonna be called is chasing. It's gonna stay a boolean because it's a true, false node that we need. All right. So we're gonna leave that there. Mark that. Okay. We're going to set that inside of our aggro check way back here at the end now you remember putting this branch in here okay this section here is if you see the player then we're gonna do something here is if we don't see and we've lost sight and we're running back to where we started then we're gonna do something else okay so we're gonna get up in here and we're gonna set a few things here All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag off of this and we're going to do a set blackboard value as a boolean. We're going to set it to true because we've been seen. All right. We're going to promote to variable and I'm going to name this variable uh, in pursuit. Uh, in pursuit. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to compile it and I'm going to save it. Now that is literally all we have to do there for right now. And you'll notice that it didn't come up because we forgot to make it public. And there it is, in pursuit. So now if you don't see it, just select your black your blackboard come back to behavior tree and select acro change again. And we're gonna select that to is chasing. Alright, so now we need to drag off of here. And now we need to make a sequence because we're going to want this firing as long as we're not seen. So we're going to do that. We're going to add a blackboard. All right. And as you can see, blackboard base condition. And I'm just going to put this one as patrolling because that's what it is. It's patrolling. I'm going to change it to is chasing and is not set. So as long as we have not been seen, our bot's going to just randomly patrol. Okay. So now we're going to drag off of that and we're going to bring in that task that we had made. We're going to make our target, our destination target, we're going to make it the new home location. Okay. Because every time he moves to a new location, that's the, the home location. All right. That's where we want him to return to. So we're going to drag this out. Now we have to put a move to. Because if you don't put this move to that location in there, he's not going to do nothing. He's just going to stand there and it's going to be stuck in this loop forever. Until you get close to him, then he'll run off. All right. But now we're going to have another problem. When he's seen, and it runs through all of this right here, and he once he stops being seen, he moves back to the location. Well, that's fine and dandy, but we'll never get back to patrolling this way. In fact, here, I'll show you. Okay, show you what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah. So we run up there. There he is patrolling. Okay, so we got the patrolling working. He doesn't see us. Okay, I know why though, so that's good. I wanted to show you that to you anyway. Ah, eh, I got caught on the rock. See, so he stopped. He stayed at that position. He's back to seeing me again. I'm going to go over here. Now, see, he just stays there. He runs back to his home point. Now, notice it's back where he started. Or not. He ran. Interesting. But he's not doing anything from there. And I can pick him up again. 
and I can run him way over here get behind the box and then he runs all the way back up there oh he's seen me again okay so he doesn't continue the patrol well the reason for that is we have nothing resetting this is chasing fe uh, feature here okay so we're gonna actually take out this last move to feature here we're gonna make a new task okay we're gonna do an event receive execute we're gonna drag off set blackboard value as bullion we're gonna set it to false we're gonna promote we're gonna call it in pursuit again that. we're gonna do that and then we're going to finish the execute and it's going to be successful okay and that right there will get to drug off of this and what hold on I need to rename it first we're going to rename it reset because that's what it is we're resetting the patroller Now we drag off and we type in reset. There it is. We reset back to home location. So now when we play it, we go up there. There he is pathing. He still don't see. Oh, now he sees us. Now we're going to run over here. And I'm going to duck behind this block. He comes to that point. And then does nothing. Oh, we see me again. Because see, the home point is that point, but it's not resetting. Mm -hmm. So to fix that, oh, what is it we have to change? Oh yeah, you have to actually make sure that in pursuit is changed to is chasing and not to home location I'm sorry that is a silly but now you'll notice that on these when I select player found you'll notice that it's a bluish tealish color okay, and it makes the next one behind it blue we need to do the same to this so if we set that to both it means either one of these two actions will cancel out this action and cause these to fire that is why our bot is not finding us immediately. So now if we go back in here, there he is patrolling. As soon as we're within range, he finds us. Now I'm going to run over here. I'm going to hide behind this block. He stops, waits two seconds, and then starts patrolling again. Okay. And then I can run up to him. Oh, there he is again and I can duck behind the block. And then he starts patrolling again from that location. He doesn't actually go back to where we found him. Well, how are we going to fix that? Well, that is actually relatively easy. And we're going to go into our aggro check here. Now, what we need to do is we need to make a branch. Because we need to have something telling us, well, if this is true, then we need to do this. If this is not true, you know, then don't do it. Okay. And I'm going to do a simple counter system. By doing a counter system, I'm going to make an integer, okay, the light green one. I'm going to name it counter. Something simple, no big deal. I'm going to leave it set to zero. I'm going to drag this out here with a get. And I'm going to do an equal and connect that up. So in other words, as long as counter equals zero, whatever is hooked to true is going to happen. And what is set to true is we are going to set uh, blackboard as a vector, and we are going to create a new key, and we're going to call this return point. Go ahead and set it to re the return point to public. And then now we've got to get where the bot is. So we're going to drag out our controller. 
we're going to get controlled pawn because we want to know the pawn that it, it is controlling and where that pawn is located. So then we get actor location, hook that up, and then hook that up to that. And then let's just kind of straighten this up a little bit, make it a little neater. Now we're going to take, and we have to prevent this from being done again. So we're going to set this to 1. So now what that's going to do is we've seen our player. We come over here. Our counter is 0. We set the position in which our bot starts off chasing us from. And then we set counter to 1 so that as the bot is running, his location is not being constantly updated. Okay. But now that now what happens when our bot doesn't see us anymore and then he returns to that location, we can't find him again, and then we, abs we happen to find him around a corner. That location isn't going to be saved at this current point. He's just going to run back to whatever the last location was that was saved. So what we need to do is we need to reset counter to zero. But we do not do it off this false node. We do it down here off of this because once he is no longer seen, once he forgets about us and runs back to that location, we need to set it to zero. Okay, Because we may find him halfway through running back to that location and that means we're going to have to have a new location. So we can compile, we can save that. We can, I'm going to minimize this here for a minute and then I'm going to drag this down here in this bottom corner a little bit. There we go. And then you can see now that we're firing off. He's moving. Okay. All right, there he is. Now, I'm going to wait for him to get in a different position from where he normally is. Uh, oh, he's found me. All right, so now that he can't find him anymore... Wait, what happened? Ah, I know what happened. Alright. In our blackboard, we have everything being home location, home location, home location. Okay. But we never set what the return point is actually going to be. So we're going to set that to... See, I think home location will work on this, and then we're going to set this to home location. If this doesn't work, then we'll have to make it own, make its own variable, which we may have to do anyway, but we'll see if this works. All right, so let's go find our bot. Oh, he's way over there. That's a good spot. All right, so now he's between that the small block and the big block. Okay, he lost sight of us. He's returning to that spot. All right, so now let's let him walk around a little bit. All right, he's on the back side of that block right there, and bam, we see him. He's chasing us, he's chasing us, he's done forgotten about us, and he's returned to that side of the block. So now, every time we engage the bot, wherever he is at, wherever we engage him, that is the point he is going to return to. Uh, he, and he will do that every time. So see, he was in that gap right there. We're going to run around this pillar here. He's forgotten about us. And whoop, he's found us again. Now notice, uh, see, he ran right back to the point he found us the second time. Okay. So that is it for the AI tutorial series. I do hope you found this very enjoyable and very informative. And I hope that it helps you in whatever games you may be creating. If you have any ideas or any recommendations that might make this system a little smoother by all means please go ahead and leave them in the comments below and I will gladly look them over and maybe make an updated video if that way works better or just make an alternate method video and that will help other people out as well but for now that is it for me so take care and have a good one